Welcome to the Vocal Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Lee Martin Thomas. Join me and my guest speakers as we discuss their journey with their voice and how they use it to support their passions and professions in media, education, and the performing arts. Okay, so we're here today for a very special sort of spontaneous episode of the Vocal Freedom Podcast, and I would really like to introduce um, my husband to the community. So this Hi is guys. Gethin. <laughs> Hi, guys. And um, he's never been on a podcast before, no. and he doesn't know anything about what we're going to talk about today. So no. um, <laughs> he understandably might be feeling a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, what's going on in your body right now? I'm a little bit feeling? nervous. You're feeling a little I'm, bit nervous? Yeah, I'm a little bit nervous. What does I'm that not, feel like? Well, I'm just a little bit of a few butterflies, because I'm not, I'm not normally used to speaking about things I don't know much about. So um, I'm used to going in things and knowing what I'm going to talk about. And so yeah. I'm, not, I'm quite relaxed normally, but I'm a little bit nervous. But yeah. um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm here, to, here to have a chat. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. And it's a bit of an experience for me because I don't normally like hearing my own voice. I have it in my head <laughs> in the headphones at the moment. Yeah, so it's, it's a different, bit, isn't it? It's yeah. a little bit different. Sharing what you think about things... Is is a trust exercise, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, for for me, I'm I'm a bit of a chatterbox when I'm talking about things I either know about or or either affect me. Like my say, for example, my work or sport, obviously, as, as you <laughs> yeah, know, absolutely. Um, and I will I will talk about that obviously with people who are responding, yeah, and stuff. It can never be a one way conversation. But outside of that, I'm not a big chatterbox at all because I don't necessarily think I have a huge amount to say. Now that now you may disagree with that. But <laughs> I've been recently been really reflecting on and one of the things I did want to talk about today is how we are now um you know 26 years into our relationship. Yeah. And we've been married for 22 years and it will be yeah. 23 next anniversary in June next year. Yeah. And you know, I think we're doing all right and I'm I'm it's yeah. almost like this is fantastic because we used to talk about when we were young we used to talk about the fact that we'd had our children really young well i mean not really young we, were really young. we weren't when really was, really young i was just i was just shy of 30 when, yeah when yeah there's born, four so. years between us right so when we first met the story of how we met is i was still 16 and i lived with my mum in my sort of family home in wiltshire but by this point it was just me and my mum my older siblings had left and started families and my parents had split up the year before so my mum was now single and I was young and single and myself. Gethin knocks on the door, but I mean, there is a story to this, but basically There's Gethin a, knocks yeah. on the door. Yeah. A connection occurred that Gethin, I think, felt first. Yes, certainly. A connection Definitely. for him was a quite an instant connection. Whereas for me, it took a couple of years <laughs> of like friendship building yeah. and trust building. And I wore her down eventually. <laughs> wore me down I don't know it's really funny when, when I when we look back at, at who we were when we were much younger but yeah when we met I was I was coming up to my 17th birthday so we met in the May and I was 17 yeah. in the June I was in the middle of my A-levels Gethin was a student he was at, what, what at this point you were a second year student uh yeah end of the second year that end was of it. the second year now this is what's weird our daughter is now in her second year at university yep. and if I you know, even just sort of thinking about what we have been through together in the last 26 years yeah. suddenly makes me feel not old, though, because I'm not ready to be old. or like, You know what I mean? So we don't feel old. Gethin's, Sometimes I do. We, we mostly try and look after ourselves. And we've, we've tried to really, you know, I think it's really what I'm really interested in at the moment is looking back is actually I'm, I'm just about to launch this January, which is called Reset and Manifest and manifestation, manifesting what it is you want to achieve. When I look back about the, the early conversations we had, even before we got married, about the life we wanted to build together and what kind of things we wanted our kids to be able to do and, mm. and, and the opportunities we wanted to, to deliver to them and how that motivated us both to work really hard yeah. to make that become a reality. We did manifest what we talked about in our early days and it's yes, just dawned have, yeah. on me recently yeah. that we've reached that bit that we were looking forward to because we were going, when, course, they yeah. co- when they get old enough... <laughs> <laughs> and they flee the nest we'll still be young enough to have a lot of our life left and we'll by that point we'll be sort of you know coming towards the end of paying the mortgage off and all that sort of stuff yeah and th- we, we're getting closer to that year yeah and that's um you know when you ref- do, how do you feel like reflecting back about our early days and what we wanted and how we've actually managed to manifest that well i think i've only I'm, like you i've probably only just realized 
I've got myself into a uh, into a position now where you don't necessarily concern yourself about the next paycheck coming in or whatever it is. It's yeah, it's, we 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 okay, have done well, the harder years, yeah. guys. I mean, we, we you know we're not it's, it's, we're all right. We're, you know, you've yeah. you've worked your way up in your career. I'm 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 evolving and working my way in mine in, in different ways now. I mean, I think my my position and my purpose has changed through this year. Mm. Um, and you know that's that's something that I'm really that I think for me the reset and manifest that starts on the first of January also includes a journey that I'm starting that day. Yeah. So as well as me leading a group of people through this this pilot study that um, that I've designed, it's also about myself and the, my journey. Yeah. And um, at the moment I'm in this sort of this fantastic sense of anticipation of what's coming only in a couple of weeks from now. Have you got any ideas or thoughts or anything that you'd like to? A manifest in the future or in next in in, in 2021 um i I'm, i don't i don't really know i must admit but i know that i had to give up doing yoga about is it two three two three two years ago three years ago because i hurt my knee at the gym and and i think i tried to go back but it was just it was just too painful but i really enjoyed the hour a week that i had when i went to the the yoga classes I really, really enjoyed it. Yes, you worked hard, but it gave you that sense of relaxation and just mm. inner thinking and just there saying, don't think of anything outside this room. Don't think of anything. Don't worry yourself. You just have to think about you. Yeah. And then you do your your, your practice and then you have a, you know, the relaxation, which is the bit I really loved <laughs> lying down. But, you know, those, those I, re- I used to come out of those and just have a real, ah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Type, type of feelings. That yeah. you was really, really relaxed after that, and it was great. I really and and I do miss that. Well, this is something that I'm really pleased to um, to hear you talk about, Gethin, because this that very element of of that release and and the restorative nature mm. of of yeah. yoga that you were that you were experiencing there. Um, the fact that you missed that means that you'd already tapped into the well being benefits of of, of practicing it. De- def- definitely, and I think the last work. You know, working from home, I think it was it was all new mm. in sort of March and April time, but it very very quickly became something which you think oh, crumbs. Is is this is this going to be it for the rest of my life? Only because in my job, I'm used to doing things differently every day. Either I'm travelling to meetings outside of London, I'm getting going to the station, I'm going on the train, I'm doing this, or I'm in the office. So not every day was the same virtually every day was different yeah but now every day is the same and so to get something like you know back like i had with the yoga which is something which was completely different to to my working life or my home life and just Mm. concentrate on yourself and just say you know what i'm just going to think about this for one hour this week and and i've really really enjoyed it if you could tap into that restorative energy that you that you felt from that release in in your yoga experience yeah. by a practice that would take just 10 minutes yeah it would be the sort of thing that would accumulate you would do 10 minutes every day so could you think can you imagine factoring in 10 minutes every day for a small amount of that kind of practice oh yeah absolutely yeah i'd love yeah. to do that yeah, yeah yeah it would be nice to to think of something that's coming up even to say, you know what? Oh God, I, I've had a really stressful day, but in half an hour, I've got my. I'm going to do my ten minutes of yeah relaxation or whatever it might be. When you when you try and forget about what you either have done that day, what you didn't do, what you did do, what you've got to do the next day or the next week or yeah. the next deadline that's coming up, and I think that'll be really good. Absolutely. I mean, what you're describing there with that sense of, and you, you know, you use the word stress. I have have Mm. had a stressful day. So many people now spend a lot lot of their physical time in a stressful environment. And that may be because their situations have heavily changed through COVID. They've gone from having a a, more of a social network with people to becoming very isolated at home. And for some people, you know, we're lucky that we have each other and we have the kids here. You know, our daughter's home for Christmas now from uni. Um, everyone's been safe and well. I mean, I, I have, have had relatives that have tested positive in other areas of the country and I have lost one relative, but I count our blessings. I really do. I wake up every oh, day definitely. with gratitude and I'm just so incredibly grateful every day that we have each other and 
yeah, the family. Yeah. And and that, to be honest, is for me, a, but that's my, my priority number one. I sort of think that... Um, I think we must have done a good job with the kids because <laughs> they are pretty safe as well. They don't, they're not, you know, you see some people are going out, still going out and doing whatever they like, but the kids aren't, you know, they, they respect that, you know, that there are safety issues and, and they need to look after themselves and Absolutely. not only themselves, but us and obviously my mum as well, who has yeah. joined our social bubble where she, she's obviously in her 80s, so, so would be uh, particularly vulnerable. Yeah, I mean, talking about vulnerability in your case, are you would you be happy to talk about your COPD? Of course. Okay, so Gethin, could you could you just describe kind of the journey of that and what happened? I think that the, it really started because I started getting it really it started in summers. I found that during the summers when there were the hay fever season, usually I would get uh, um, pretty heavy um, hay fever symptoms. Oh yeah, and then some and then, years, and Ooh. then one year it got so bad that I was I was actually struggling to breathe, and I remember having to go to the drop-in centre in Colchester when it was open, and I had to go on a I can't remember what they're called now, and they go on your your face, R- uh, like um, a respirator, a nebulizer, yeah, a nebulizer. nebulizer. I had to go on, and they put me on a nebulizer for yeah. about sort of five minutes and just mm-hmm. breathing sort of oxygen and just getting that through. And then uh, since then, and that was probably six, seven years ago, maybe, maybe more, I don't know. From that time, I'd always been given Ventolin inhalers. 14, I think. And that that, that Ventolin inhaler was there as a just-in-case. Ventolin is is a reliever, and the other one she used to have is the preventer. Yes, so yeah. you, you can get like an inhaler to sort of prevent asthma build up. You do and you one can get that you one do that, every day and then yeah. one that you do if you're feeling in between. Yeah. If, if during the day, if you're feeling particularly, then you can do that. So so you were, were initially put on one of those. Yeah, it was I just, just like use a, it as and when. Absolutely. I just had a normal normal um, inhaler and that, that, that was fine. And then I was finding that I was becoming more and more breathless mm. at more and more times during the year. I was still trying to, I think at this time, I'm not sure if I was even going to the gym, but maybe I was going to the gym and I was finding it harder and harder to to do the amount of work that I was doing at the gym. And so I think I, in the end, I oh, it was probably five, six years ago-ish. And yeah. I remember going in to see the doctor and saying that, you know, I'd been having the Ventolin inhaler and it was fine for, you know, the mass majority of the year. It was absolutely fine. But I was finding at times I was really not necessarily struggling to breathe, but I was, you know, whether wheezing and things like that. And they said, well, perhaps we should um, do a test for... I don't, Actually, I don't even think they... They didn't mention they COPD didn't mention, at this no, point. No, they, they just, didn't just wanted it. to do the respirometer. Spirometer. Yeah. Spirometry. spirometry. Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> and you have to blow really hard and fast. You have to and blow they measure really, the yeah. pressure the of your lungs. The first thing you lungs, do is you they? blow very fast mm-hmm. and then you as keep long going. as you can go for as long as yeah. you can go but you try and do it very quickly but then mm-hmm. keep it going yeah and then the next one i think is you blow at a steady rate but just keep going and going and going and you have to sort of force yourself past the feeling of wanting to breathe in keep breathing out until you i mean you know at this point you you're going to feel other kickbacks in other absolutely. areas you know you're using muscles that you probably have never consciously absolutely. used for breathing but singers would be very familiar with and if on, you're on talking the, about sort of a little bit of tummy support on yeah, definitely. to assist yeah and on on the the uh, spirometry test you have to hit a certain figure otherwise it doesn't register and then you have to do the test again mm-hmm. so the first time i tried to do this test is I did it well a couple of times. I think you have to do it three, three times. times. Three times. You have to register three times and then it works out an average. Or, yeah. But for that third time, I could not reach the minimum level for it to be registered on the device. And I had to do this over and over and over again. And God. now I know I know you're way more experienced. <coughs> and I'm sure a lot of the listeners are a lot more experienced about breathing. But chucking everything I had in my lungs out mm. and keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going... Well, in the end, I had to. I, that's very I got, effortful, isn't it? I was. I didn't feel very well. well I'm not surprised. Away. I mean, yeah, I, got, yeah, yeah. I was very, very lightheaded. Yeah. I had to lie me down in the couch in the GP's. Absolutely. Room. I bought that book, didn't I? It was on my shelf right over there. Breathe well and live well with COPD. That's right. And I was really interested in how this correlated with singing and breath work for you. So we did start. 
we did have a couple of sessions, didn't we? We lay down upstairs and I, I talked to you about did, centered yeah. breathing. Yep. But we haven't ever done that as a regular thing. No. Some of the practices that I'm bringing into the Reset and Manifest course will include some breath work and some body work that I uh, think correlates yeah. with those kind of exercises. Yeah. So I, re- I think it'd I be good for you. After, you know, after I'd, I'd, I'd done the tests and, and they'd come back and I'd been essentially diagnosed with COPD mm. and then I was starting to learn and I was put on a um, like a steroid inhaler and then looked the same as a vental inhaler but had a steroid in it mm-hmm. and I remember I think every year you should go in and you have a, another test to make sure and they'd see how you're getting on you compare your results to the year before yeah and I remember going in one year and asking you to come with me because I wanted you to see what the test was like because you had started this sort of practice practice and knew about the breathing and the, the yeah i mean i've been studying anatomy and and, 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 and obviously like understanding the respiratory system is yeah. part of my job as a voice teacher understanding all of that so i was really interested to go and sit in in this appointment and just see the process of what he was what is what they were asking his body to do and why yeah and what they were testing and how and you know I, i'm i'm just curious by nature i'm sorry i was just, I, I was he asked me to go and i was like yes but i remember <laughs> research you, i remember you being i would say shocked but you were relatively surprised about you know the amount of you know when I was breathing out and getting that I was going past and keep going and the, they were the G you know the nurse or the GP was going keep going keep going keep going and you were looking more and more concerned <laughs> I, and I was probably getting redder and redder yeah I was actually really quite concerned at one point because the keep going keep going keep going there's only so far you can actually go and if you yeah. and, and if you go at something with high effort and energy as much as this man has got the the strongest will most stubborn streak you've ever, you will ever meet um you know in some regards and 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 very and very fixed in certain things that you believe in about sport and the yeah. way things should be and you know and I'm very opinionated and I think it's brilliant I, I think it's really wonderful when someone has a good idea of, of what they're about so I, I'm not making any complaints here I'm just trying to let people into know <laughs> to know a bit more about your character because obviously I've known your character for so long and, and yeah. who you are and how you work and the interesting thing for me in inviting you to take this journey with us next year yeah. is is to find out at the end of the study how this work has impacted your COPD, your perception of mm. your COPD and your ability to get the most from your body. Because actually, I think Gethin, although he's been diagnosed with this day to day, you have a practice you have to do this. You, what's your day to day you have to do in the mornings got, and the evenings? Well, I, I well, I don't, the, the inhaler I had before you had to do in the mornings and, and in the evenings. Right. But that's changed recently. That's changed now because the last time I went for my review, they they said, what, why are you taking this? And I said, well, the last you told me to, you told me to. <laughs> yes. and they said, well, you shouldn't have been on this. You need to be on this. So they oh. put me on this other inhaler, which is a, a single dose and you only do it in the mornings. OK. And it's not as essentially it's not a steroid. Okay. Um, but you do that in the mornings, and then you open open the uh, little device, and then you breathe that in, yeah. and then you hold it. I try and hold it for 20 seconds if I can. And it then, tells you to do that? Well, it tells you to breathe in, and then hold. And hold then the breath. Out, and then let, let out slowly. Okay. And I do that once a day. Okay. And that's not a problem for me at all. And Do you feel uh, any kind of, like physical relief after you no, you've done a, it does it no that, that no that's the thing i don't feel a, a physical relief when when that happens what do you think it's doing for you I, if i'm being brutally honest i don't know okay that's all right. i don't know but when i've been doing my because I, I regularly do so three times a week i do hit sessions yeah now since since that obviously the gym i was a member of a gym i went to the gym to do those classes they locked down. COVID, out, yeah. COVID. So I then started doing them at home and then thought, well, why am I paying for this gym when I can probably do them at home? So yeah. I get up early in the mornings three times a week and I, I do my workout, my HIIT workout downstairs. But I've been doing that now for, I think, nearly four years, I think. I think I started going the summer, that my first summer I was at AWA, which is so 2016. Okay. But I remember back then... Certainly, once I'd got used to it, because it is something you yeah, have to get used to. Intense. It has to build build yourself up to it. But once you get used to it, I was finding I was not a problem. That's fine. No, I'm not really struggling for breath at all. Yeah. But over the years, I have noticed more and more that I get out of breath a lot easier and a lot quicker. Okay. And I don't. That's not just in. In doing the hit workouts, that will be doing anything. General stuff. In general stuff, okay. I'll find myself more out of breath than I would be before. Okay. 
Can you correlate any of that with your levels of stress? I'm I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think it's not it's a connection that you've possibly no, made. No, I haven't. Because it's, ima- it's a connection I've possibly made, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for bearing with us here. We're just okay, having quite a, a very open conversation as husband and wife on, on air here. But, but I, d- I do want to sort of share with you that, that my perception is actually that the, the more stress and sort of seemingly discomfort there is in your working life the more I see you strive for activities outside of that at home that yeah. we enjoy. I mean, we both enjoy taking the dog for a walk and things like that. So, you know, it's really nice to do that, but we both get a real sense of, oh, we can let something go when we go out for a walk. Yeah, definitely. And But aside from that, neither of us, especially since lockdown, have really, well, I've been trying to, actually, I have been doing stuff, but we haven't been sort of actively doing stuff that is about letting go of stress. Um, and I think this is what I'm bringing into this practice for myself from the 1st of January is a conscious amount of time each day to let go of stress I have to have a more sort of more a more balanced system I have a better flow I have found myself feeling more stressed whilst working from home I don't I'm not sure why that has why that has sometimes it's probably Leo (laughs) but I think (laughs) Leo, th- Leo's on my lap sleeping right now. I wish I could, I'm, I'm, I will bring him up. At some I think point, it, it's yeah. strange because the the position I'm in, people expect you to be available very early in the morning, all the way through to because because uh, the people who work for us, they they you know if they're working from home, they can work different times if they want to. Some so some people are starting work at seven o'clock in the morning and finishing at say three, and some people are starting work at half nine and work until half six, seven o'clock at night. So and they're allowed to do that. Yeah, as long as they do the hours, that's not necessarily but isn't a problem. It, but you said to me before about if they finish at three, they've still got to be available till six. Because yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. The, the acknowledgement is if you have a meeting that it starts at four o'clock, you can't just say no. I've done my seven and a half hours. Yeah, it's, yeah. So don't it, start as early that no, day, kind of thing. But for us, I feel as though I have to be available during the whole of that period. Now, seven a.m. till. Yeah, I mean, not necessarily that early. I mean, I can I can answer things on my mobile phone, but people will start ringing me from say half eight in the morning and okay. are still ringing me gone six o'clock sometimes, and therefore stress wise, you feel as though you've all, you always have to be in work mode. Yeah. Whereas if you're in the office, I would drive to the office and say get there about half eight, put stuff down, turn the PC on go and get a cup of coffee, have a chat, you know, and you're, you're rarely really working, if you like, till probably, you know, five to ten to nine type of thing. Then you have an hour for lunch, and then probably around five, quarter past five-ish, a lot of the office have, has gone, and they're no longer available. Mm. And therefore, you can get on with some work. But And so I've found that stress levels working from home is more... Yeah, acute you feel that there's more demand of you. I have, absolutely, yeah. I think, yeah. I think certainly at the position of me and my colleagues, yeah, the three of us in in our position, there is a lot more required of us in this period of working from home. I'm really grateful for you sort of sharing that. I mean, this is something that I know, but yeah. how do you feel about sharing that? No, I, I don't. I don't. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, and I'm happy to happy to share that. I think. If one of your colleagues listened in on this podcast episode, yeah, do you think that they would have any idea of of, of the stress that you might feel behind the scenes? Do you, do you demonstrate and talk to your colleagues about your feelings? No. I, and it's fair enough, you know. No, I, it's no, fair enough I, if no, you I don't, because most you know most men probably don't in the workplace, no. do they? No, I no, I don't. And and it's the sort of stress levels I try, I try and organise myself. I try and write little. Post-it notes everywhere. Yeah, you, you are my like desk. that. I've yeah. got post-it notes everywhere. But when somebody asks me to do something or I realise I've got to do something, I try and write it down. So it gives me a reminder that I should do it. Mm-hmm. Therefore, and the other thing is I, I never like, I don't like disappointing people. So if somebody asks me to do something, I do try and do it. Mm-hmm. I do try and do it within, well, certainly within the time frame they've asked me to do. But a lot of people are relying relying on you to say check some drawings or check a report or check a specification only because they've worked hard to do that and they've done everything they can to get that report to you in the best conditions that they feel they have and when it's sent to you you then feel responsible and you 
you know, you do your hardest to do that. So whatever time of day it is, mm. if that has got to go out of the office, then it's got to go out of the office. And, and yeah. um, that does lead to some nights, not many, but there is the occasional night that you have to work pretty late. Mm. And I think that's great. I mean, your sense of that, that responsibility is, is evident. And I think, you know, a reason that you're very good at your job. And I think that's the difference, isn't it? When, when people aren't satisfied with their work, they perhaps don't take as much responsibility. In their yeah, work. I th- yeah, I, th- you know? I think people, yeah, a lot, some, some, some people, and, and I'm not talking about anybody at my work. <laughs> we'll really just get not, that in there in case anyone's I'm listening. Just not, <laughs> just not, but there are generally there are people who are there to clock in, clock out, yeah, get their money, they're happy, yeah, yeah. But that's not that that's not me. I feel well. I think you always wanted a career. I mean, ever since I've known you, you 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 really gave me that impression and certainly spoke to me about the fact that you were building a career in this particular industry and you know I have seen you obviously grow and go up the ladder of Mm. you know the 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 positions um through come through these companies as you've as you've grown and as we've been together so I see that you've been you've kind of again manifested what you wanted you you've got yourself now just to this almost to the top of the tree of management yeah and um, hopefully, you know, you, you will manifest exactly what you want, which is before you retire, yeah. be in, in one of those top positions. So there's 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 some really cool stuff that's been going on behind the scenes of our lives that we haven't yeah. necessarily been conscious of. But when I think back to what we wanted and I realise what we've achieved, I realise that we have been manifesting what we were set out to do. Yeah, yeah, But definitely. just unconsciously, not like consciously think, going, oh, let's do this because then we'll be, you know, yeah. literally, it's just happened. Yeah, as you say, you always look, you look back and you think, well, what did I think I'd be doing at this time? You go, oh, okay, well, I could have been in this position. You go, and you go, then you look back and you go, well, I probably was in that position then. Yeah. <laughs> and where do I feel as though I needed to be here? Well, I'm pretty much here. Exactly. You know? So I think we have done... I think we, as you say, we have gone through those stages, probably unconsciously, mm. without without realizing that we are pushing forwards. And and as you say, we have found ourselves in an in an enviable position. You know, I, I you know, I don't want to. No, I mean, you no, know, we're we, not like you know, we're not millionaires. No. We're not loaded. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm I feel like I'm at the beginning of something again now. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be in a position to help people. You know, going back to um, the new year, I'm going to send it out there and say, look, this is this is the man I love. Of course. Um, he has some health <laughs> issues. I'm doing a course <laughs> that is about vocal health and well-being. Yeah. And I'm really excited that he's going to come on this journey with us. Um, and I'm really excited to see how it will impact his healing and his yeah. ability to actually live with his condition and not see it progress any further. If we, you know, if we're feeling that there is some progression, yeah. and you're noticing it in your working out, then we want to try and, you know, preserve you as yeah. long as we no, possibly can. You know, yeah. um, and you know, for myself as well, starting the new year is about a new health kick, definitely. But I'm really, really holding myself accountable because I'm sharing the journey with all of you. I'm sharing the journey with you as well. Yeah. So 1st of January, back here at 2pm, we will yes. be doing some exercises together. Gethin and I will be showing I you. I will be here. I will be here. <laughs> be showing you a few things that he's going to be working on. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be lots of fun, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, thank you very much. Have the best at Christmas. Hope you enjoy the next episode. And um, anything you'd like to say before we sign off? No, no, I'm, I, am, I am certainly looking forward to uh, to going on this journey and, and seeing the, the benefits of... Uh, of the practice it, 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 it reflecting back onto my COPD because um, I've never really thought because it's not really something that has at, at the moment impacts on my life it's it, it, it'll be good to do something now to even as a, even a preventative thing for later Absolutely. in life so no it'll be good I'm really looking forward to it yeah and I'm glad you used that word I think because preventative medicine is part of the study Mm. um what we can do to keep our immune systems really strong what we can do to keep our emotional state and well-being really strong so we can always be in a really good position to use our voice and speak our truth and speak from our our soul if you like our center our our um the real i the real person inside of you yeah you know and lots of people don't necessarily tap into that so part of this study is doing that too anyway 
Let's sign off. Okay. I've got to get ready because I'm going to be sitting through a Soul Enlightenment oh, got, yeah, um, yeah, Akashic yeah, yeah. Records uh, session at uh, in 10 minutes' time. So I'm going to give myself a moment to remove Super. the dog from my lap. Yep. And uh, we shall catch up with you on the other side. In fact, there is my alarm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Cheerio. Great. Cheers. Bye. Thank you for joining me on the Vocal Freedom Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed the episode and we'll move into your day with a bit more vocal freedom, feeling that you can express using your voice and let the world hear what you have to say. Visit colchestervoiceacademy.com forward slash podcast. Sign up to be kept informed as new episodes are published and consider joining our online community. Membership to this will allow you to post questions to our guests, link you to show notes, social media links, and entitle you to exclusive offers from our guests. See you next time.